First get your body into position. Try to sit straight, facing forward, your gaze level, and close your eyes. Place your hands in your lap, right hand on top of the left. And then get your mind into position. We just had that chant on goodwill. And try to recall it. A desire for happiness, a desire for true happiness, for yourself and for, for everyone else. Remembering that true happiness comes from within, which means that your true happiness doesn't have to conflict with anyone else's. And so send th thoughts of goodwill to as many people as you can think of, even people you don't know. That establishes the right orientation for the meditation. You're here to find true happiness. Now you're not going to find it by looking around and seeing what we're in the body. It's this little lump of happiness. Aware in the mind is this lump of happiness. It's by developing skills. And that takes time, takes energy. But it's energy well spent and time well spent. Because the rewards are solid. The happiness you can depend on, a happiness that causes no trouble for anybody. That's something really special. But to find that happiness, you have to develop good qualities of mind. This is what the meditation is for. The Pali word for meditation, bhavana, literally means developing. You want to develop mindfulness. For once you've made up your mind you're going to follow a particular path, you have to keep remembering that. You can't let yourself forget. And as we all know, the mind has a Lots of strategies and techniques by which it lets itself forget about things, especially when the new habit or the new aim you have here goes against a lot of old entrenched ones. So you want to be mindful. You want to be alert to see what you're actually doing. You want to develop concentration so you can stay focused. The mind gets settled in, develop a sense of ease and well-being here in the present moment. And so can see things clearly, and particularly can see what the mind is intending to do, all the different intentions that come through. If you want to watch them, you have to watch them here in the present moment. And this is why we focus on the breath, because the breath is our anchor to the present moment. You can't watch a past breath, you can't watch a future breath. Just this breath right here, coming in and going out. So take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. See how it feels. Where do you feel the breathing? And we're not talking just about the air coming in and out of the lungs, but the movement of energy in the body. Where are the sensations that tell you now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out? And focus on those sensations. Stay with them. All the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. This is where mindfulness gets developed. Because you have to keep remembering you're going to stay right here with the sensation of the breathing. You're not going to allow yourself to slip off. If you do slip off, then as soon as you notice it, come right back. all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Each time you come back, ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel really good right now? As a reward for coming back. And if something feels good, stick with it. If it doesn't, you can, you can change, you can experiment. Longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter.
faster, slower. Until you find a rhythm that feels really good, then stick with it as long as it feels good. After all, you find that the needs of the body change. And so the kind of breathing that's going to feel good will also change. So allow it to. Keep exploring. Keep on top of this. This is how you develop alertness. If it gets mechanical, everything goes on to automatic pilot, and you go wandering off and start thinking about tomorrow or yesterday or this person, that person. because you're not fully engaged. Think about this. You're focusing on the energy of life, the breath coming in, the breath going out. And you're trying to pay attention to how it feels in the body. Think of the breathing as a whole body process. And to notice where in the body there's tension that feels like it's blocking the breath. Or ways that tension builds up with the in-breath, or you hold on to tension with the out-breath. And see if you can breathe in a way that doesn't build up that tension, doesn't hold on to that tension. There's a lot to explore here. So it's not just that you're holding yourself clamp down to the breath without anything to do, without any wiggle room. Think of it as learning about the energy of life right here, how it's nourishing your body. Is it nourishing or is it just hardly allowed to nourish anything at all because it's so restricted? If it feels restricted, allow it to open up a bit. You're trying to establish a comfortable place here, because if you want to stay in the present moment, you have to make the present moment comfortable. Otherwise, you're going to keep leaving. Another term for meditation is Vihara Dhamma. It means literally a home, the qualities of mind that you can take as your home. And if your home's not comfortable, you're not going to want to stay there. So you move in and figure out, okay, what do you want in this house? Where do you want light? Where do you want your sofa? Where do you want your bed? Where do you want the kitchen? What kind of food are you going to have in the house? In other words, learn how to inhabit this place with a sense of well-being, with a sense that you belong. As for your outside concerns, learn how to let them go. Now, this is going to take effort, and you're going to find yourself slipping off and you'll come right back. There's nobody here to scold you for slipping off. But you do want to be firm with yourself. Each time you go, you say, wait a minute, that's not what we're here for. I'm not here to think about tomorrow. I'm here to learn about the mind. Strengthen the mind. Develop good qualities in the mind. Because that's how happiness is found. And so setting things up like this is going to take a while, especially if you haven't meditated before. But it's a first step that everybody has to follow through with. The Buddha talks about three levels of skillful effort. And the first level is just this, giving rise to skillful qualities in the mind. And learning how to let go of anything else that pulls you away. And at the moment, skillful means just this. Whatever helps keep you stay here, that's a skillful thought, a skillful intention. Whatever pulls you away is not wanted right now. So just let it go, let it go, let it go. The second level of effort is when you've learned how to establish something like this, is to learn how to develop it. In other words, learning how to maintain this sense of being centered inside, 
in all different situations, or as many different situations as you can master. So that when you get up from the meditation and walk away, you can still stay centered inside. It takes some coordination, it takes some practice. And then you learn how to stay centered when you're doing other tasks, other chores, when you're talking to people. You build up gradually. You talk to people that are easy to get along with. You can stay centered, okay? Then you can. Then of course you have to deal with people that are not easy to get along with. Can you stay centered there? This is where the sense of full body awareness is really useful. Thinking the breathing as a whole body process. You inhabit your whole body. so that nobody else's energy can come in, take over your space. It's like a magnetic field that protects you from all the negative energies out there. And you begin to see that as you use the meditation this way, you find that it's a really valuable skill. And at the same time, as you're trying to master this skill and being centered, a sense of well-being, a lot of things come up, which you normally would just flow along with. It's like a person floating down a river. But now you've got something to hold on to. So when the river is flowing nice and Lazily, you're okay, and even when it flows strongly, you're okay. Even when it floods, you're okay. You've got something to hold on to. The Buddha talks about this as having an island. And as you're holding on here, you begin to see that there are the various things that would normally pull you away. And you say, oh my gosh, I've got that attachment and this attachment. And as you're watching it, you can, you can see clearly that as you, if you try to hold on to these things, you're going to suffer. You can just feel the tension in the breath. Then you ask yourself, why would I want to hold on to those things? So as you stay here, you watch, you begin to see, okay, you have fun with this, you enjoy that, even though you ordinarily might not admit it to yourself, because there are a lot of things that we think about. We think, this is just horrible, I hate this, but you keep feeding it over and over and over again. You must be getting some satisfaction, some gratification out of those thoughts. We'll look into it. This is where the meditation as a foundation gets you. Helps you gain insight. Because you have this thing to hold on to, the sense of the breath, the sense of the body, right here in the present moment. So when these other currents come flowing along, you don't have to go with them. And because you have something solid here in the present moment to hold on to, you can actually see these movements, otherwise you might miss them. It's like going out in the middle of a field and looking up at the sky. If there are no trees around, nothing at all to take as a solid point of reference. You look up in the sky and you see the clouds, and you wonder, well, are those clouds moving or are they not moving, or is it just my imagination? But if there's a tree or a telephone pole or the peak of a roof, you can focus on that and you begin to notice, okay, the, the clouds are moving north, the clouds are moving south, they're moving this fast. You've got a point of comparison. So this stage of, of the effort is learning how to develop what you've got, develop the good qualities in mind. And you gain an understanding into how things arise and how they pass away as you master the process of getting the mind to settle down. It's this process of experimentation 
We tend to want to rush through it really quickly, but it's going to take time. It's not a matter of just gaining one's insight and that takes care of everything. You gain an insight in this particular unskillful quality of the mind, then you gain an insight in that one, or this attachment, or that attachment. And gradually you begin to see patterns, why the mind holds on to things. where it feels that it's gaining some advantage out of holding on. And when you begin to see it's not really gaining that advantage at all, and the holding on is just causing a lot of unnecessary stress, unnecessary suffering, that's when you can let go. And at the same time, your concentration goes stronger. Now, this doesn't all happen in a nice, smooth, upward curve. There are going to be ups and downs. An important part of the practice is learning how to learn from the downs. So each time you sit and meditate, whether it goes well or doesn't go well, you've got an opportunity to learn. So in spite of the ups and downs, the general curve is upward. There's greater clarity in the mind, greater understanding. Your powers of mindfulness, alertness, concentration, discernment, they all grow. And ultimately, it brings in the mind to a point what we might call the third level of skillful effort, is where there's really nothing more to do. Your skillful qualities are developed. There's a great sense of balance in the mind, stability. There's a strong sense of well-being. Now, this is not the ultimate happiness. But still, it's stable enough to give you a sense of feeling at home here, like you really belong. And your sensitivity towards the various ways that the mind creates suffering just grow more and more refined, more and more refined, until the process of development is complete. That's when you have to let go. And this is total letting go. And the Buddha talks about this this particular stage in, in paradoxes. He says you're not standing still, but you're not moving forward and you're not drifting backwards. Or in an image of crossing the river. It's not like you're swimming across the river. At the same time, you're not treading water and you're not sinking. So when you say, well, what is that? It's a point of extreme balance extreme sensitivity. So when you totally let go at that point, you can let go and you don't just fall back to your old ways or unskillful habits. Everything opens up to something that's really special. It's beyond time, it's beyond space, totally unconditioned. I talk about that as touching it with the body or seeing it with the body. In other words, it's a total experience. It's not just an idea. We all like the idea that we could just kind of let go and there would be nothing you have to do and there would be nothing but happiness. And we get impatient. We like to have that early on in the practice. But it doesn't work that way. You do have to develop skillful qualities so they are strong, solid. You really can depend on them. And it's only through developing that you really learn, that you gain the insight, because it's in gaining the insight into how cause and effect happen in the mind that you get more and more sensitive to the various levels of stress and suffering, the various intentions that you have that you might have missed otherwise, and it would have just gone on underground. But as you keep working on keeping the mind centered still, well established here in the present with a sense of well-being with the breath well-being in the present moment. Your increased sensitivity allows you to let go of things you would never even imagine were there 
to begin with. That's what allows the letting go, the final letting go, to be complete. The image the Buddha gives is of the continental shelf off of India. It's a gradual slope and then a sudden drop. The gradual slope is the effort of giving rise to skillful qualities, learning how to develop them. And the slope means that as you develop them, you just gain more and more insight, more and more mastery of how to keep the mind glad when it otherwise might get depressed, how to keep it steady when it otherwise, otherwise might just go wandering off, and how to let go of the things that oppress it, the various thoughts and attachments you have to keep you weighed down. And of course, in doing that, the sensitivity allows you to finally, when there's that point of no effort, no intention, that the letting go really does open you up to something special. So what this means is that however much you might want to have that last stage happen tonight, or you might say, well, I'll be reasonable just in this weekend, it doesn't work that way. The sensitivity is something that develops through your consistent practice. So it's learning to have the patience to stick with it, stick with it, keep focused on the path. As you stay focused on the path, the goal will come. Because the path leads you there. Which means that you give your full attention to what you're doing right here, right now. Because everything that you need to know is happening right here, right now. And the goal, when it comes, will open up right here, right now, and take you on beyond right here, right now. But it's found, sort of the entrance to that spot is right here, right now. So everything you want to know is going to, should be focused right here. Everything you want to do should be focused right here. However long it's going to take, it doesn't really matter, just that you stick with the practice. So whether it's simply a matter of learning how to give rise to skillful qualities or you're working on developing them, it's all good work. So try to do it with a sense of joy in the work, because this is good work, not harming anybody at all. A sense of respect, a sense of when you give it your full attention, because it does give important results. <laughs>